Hello and welcome to thegunblog.ca. I'm Nicholas Johnson and my guest today is Patrick Plunkett. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Nicholas. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for being on. You are a second year law student at the University of New Brunswick, and I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about. It's a, a proposal that I find original and innovative and has tremendous potential for advancing Canadian gun rights based on existing legislation. So what are the key points of, uh, of this proposal? And I should just uh, precursor that. You sent me, this is from a memo that you sent me. It's a memo, several page memo that you wrote up outlining this in details. And yeah, what are the key points of the, of the proposal? Yeah, so it's a legislative solution that can be locally enacted, meaning at the municipal level. And what makes it a little bit different is that it's it, it exploits a carve out within the federal criminal code, uh, sections 117.07 and then a few following sections that uh, create classes of exempted persons uh, who are exempt from various uh, firearms restrictions to do with licensing, storage, uh, carrying the types of firearms available for use. And so it's a little unusual in that it's not a litigation strategy or an administrative strategy. It's a straightforward legislative strategy. And the idea essentially is that municipalities can create classes of what are called public officers under these uh, exempted persons sections. And so these could include police officers, they could include potentially bylaw officers. There's a whole range of categories of person that a municipality could create uh, that would fall under these exempted persons uh, sections. Very interesting. And the, the big idea here is that we're, we're looking for a way, or you're, you're looking for a way, you found a way potentially to allow people to keep their firearms as and, and the context for this is in Canada, firearm ownership, firearm possession, buying, selling, owning, having, transporting any firearm is extremely regulated. And right now there's a federal government that is hostile to gun owners and confiscating them and making it more and more restrictive, more and more prohibitive, increasing penalties. And you're looking for a way to uh, protect gun owners from that federal government oppression and restriction. And you you have found this way that potentially already exists in in existing law that doesn't require going to court and fighting back and yada yada it's a it's a possibility that could exist for a municipality to use right now and that's what i think is so exciting is that right that's exactly right yeah it's um it's a straightforward workaround that is available right now any town council uh could enact it as part of a, a a municipal bylaw or a set of municipal bylaws if they chose to do so they could do it tomorrow how did you come up with this idea so i was um i was working f as part of some of my uh legal explorations you might call them or experiments within law school i was working on a paper that had to do with administrative nullification as a provincial strategy and i wasn't entirely satisfied with it it seemed a little esoteric it seemed a bit out there I wanted to find a more direct uh, and a more uh, and a more permanent strategy that can be a, could be enacted legislatively, and so I was reading through the criminal code in a very casual manner and came across these exempted persons sections that I had never seen before, and uh, it really was that simple. I I tend to pursue very unusual ideas, and this one was so uh so simple at first blush that i was surprised i hadn't come across it before well i think it's surprising that you hadn't come across but also nobody has come across and i'm going to say also as far as we know that there's about 30 let's call it 3500 municipalities in canada everything ranging from giant cities big cities like toronto montreal vancouver to small towns with uh, a few thousand people so everybody in canada lives in a municipality some municipalities are overtly hostile to firearm ownership and some are not. Some are overtly, what's the opposite, friendly, supportive of, of personal firearm ownership. And so this is sort of in a way uh, an introduction or a plea or an invitation to municipalities who are favorable to, the, to firearm ownership to, to explore this if they want. 
And also, we, so as far as we know, this is untested. We don't know, well, I say we because I'm just discovering this topic, but we've talked about it a little bit before this video. Um, you don't know of any municipality that has tried this yet. So this is kind of an invitation. Hey guys, this thing, uh, check it out. There are also, I want to talk about some skepticism, right? There is some skepticism, some naysayers, people who say, oh, well, it might be legally possible, but if any municipality tried it, the federal government would find a way to shut it down. What's what's a response to people who say uh, legally possible, but it'll never work in practice? Well, it's it's not an unfounded concern, and the flip side of what makes the strategy a little more uh, easily implementable at first is uh, it makes it a little bit harder to maintain over time under a sustained attack. So it is possible, for instance, that a town of a thousand people say. Uh, could implement this tomorrow. On the other hand, if the federal government, as I'm sure it would, uh, decided to crack down on that municipality or pressure the province to in turn pressure that municipality through financial means or other means uh, to repeal that policy, a small town or even a collection of small towns does not necessarily have all of the resources to withstand that kind of attack. On the other hand, uh, collective action by organizations of rural municipalities or larger associations of municipalities generally with either the direct support or at the very least the non-interference of the province within which those municipalities uh, reside, uh, I think that that could stand, that grouping of uh, jurisdictions could stand a very strong chance of fighting back against federal pressure and so just to translate that if i if i got it right something like the the alberta association of municipalities or the saskatchewan association of rural municipalities or as examples a, a provincial some association of municipalities could band together and say you know let, let's do this or let's try this out um and essentially acting alone might be tough, but acting as a collectivity, as a group, makes you stronger. United we stand, divided we fall. That's exactly right. And your idea also is that the, the municipality would designate someone, say, with a firearm possession and acquisition license, someone with a, a government-issued firearm license that gets vetted every single day, would grant them some special status as a uh, a public officer or a peace officer with very restricted limited powers to enable their firearm their 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 let's call it legitimate ownership buying selling use of of their firearm officially would be designated as a public officer slash peace officer with restricted powers to enable their their possession is that um am i am i encapsulating it correctly no, that's that's precisely it. Yeah, you you create a, a core of public officers within that municipality, uh, which has a, a very broad franchise that would include, say, legal firearms owners or law abiding adults. You could apply all manner of background checks to membership of this officer core and you would give them, a, as you say, a, a very limited set of duties, perhaps as limited as raising the hue and cry which is something which has gone out of fashion, but was once very, very common in common law jurisdictions. And then the bylaw would also state that the carrying or the possession or the use of these firearms would be necessary for the carrying out of that duty. And there you, you give peace officer status to the residents of your municipality and protect them from uh, gun restrictions that way. And, and I'm really excited about this because I have not heard of anything like uh, like this. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a constitutional uh, specialist at all. And there would be some, I can imagine some constitutional questions around this between the supremacy of, of federal versus provincial versus municipal legislation and and around firearm ownership. And there, there could be, it's, it's a very interesting potentially legislative uh, policy discussion around this. Um, the would you expect the would you expect say the federal government to say no 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 firearm ownership is a federal responsibility are federal um uh, prohibitions trump any kind of municipal permissions uh, i would expect that to be one of the tacts they would take yes um they of course 
we're only exploiting if this strategy were to be implemented we would only be exploiting a carvo that was created by the federal government so even if they were to argue that this was some colorable attempt to circumvent federal uh firearms regulation i don't think that argument would pan out what they would have to do more likely is either as we've discussed previously exert political pressure or change the exempted persons statute uh, or section i should say so as to restrict the franchise of peace officers but that's a much more difficult thing to do as far as i can tell on their end because some case law in the past like uh, the o'hara case from 1987 at the supreme court of canada has found that the provinces have an original right to appoint and control and discipline peace officers. So it gets much more complicated uh, when you pursue that kind of strategy. So there, there are, um, oops, there are some, um, I mean, there are legitimate legal questions, but like any policy, I think what, what also what, uh, what non-specialists like me need to realize is that some things can be conceptually very simple and in fact, there's tons and tons and tons of thousands of, well, like thousands of pages of legislation and policy and regulations around it, even though to the end user, it might appear very simple conceptually. And that's, that affects pretty much everything we do. It's not specific to firearm uh, possession, ownership, buying, selling, trade. Uh, the, the, I want to also ask, you sent this on, um, I'm just going to put the, the, the PDF back up. You said it's dated 14th of February, so Valentine's Day, nice Valentine's Day present. Uh, it's eight pages long. How long did you spend drafting it, researching it, preparing it, thinking about it, analyzing it? I had been thinking about it for probably four or five weeks. Uh, I Most of the research was done over the space of one week, and I hammered it out, I think, uh, from Friday of, of that weekend until uh, a couple of hours before I sent it off to you. That's pretty amazing. Okay, so I'm, I'm just like, oh my god, okay, uh, that's, I think, I, to me, that sounds really fast and, um, and efficient. I kind of say, what's your, what's your productivity? We'll have a different conversation about your productivity secrets. The, <laughs> what, uh, and I also want to say that I'll make the, the um, PDF available for download in the article at the gunblog.ca. You can find uh, more details on this at the gunblog.ca. The, uh, yeah, what do you view as possible next steps or what are you hoping are next steps now? Well, I hope that the idea gets spread around a little bit uh, that people who uh, have a, a platform to talk about it and who might have some ability to implement it or influence people who have the ability to implement it, um, consider the idea and flesh it out. Uh, I, we spoke previously about the RMA and the SARM, these uh, organizations of rural municipalities. I'd like to be able to take the idea to one of their conventions in the near future and keep propagating the idea, uh, have people who have, you know, more uh, political and legal expertise than myself, uh, give us some legs and uh, put some, some more flesh onto its bones as it were. Yeah. So it's almost like, um, I'm, it's like, it's like a, a, a pilot's pilot proposal or a concept, like a pr looking for a proof of concept at this stage and, and, and seeing who picks it up, who wants to explore it and dive deeper and, uh, and figure out how to implement it. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. All right. Well, I'm really glad, uh, I, I want to first, um, again, say how excited I am about this because it, it's, I think this is a very, it's, I find it original, innovative, and important within the context of the types of discussions we have about firearm ownership in Canada. This is very different from most of the conversations. There are so many people who are stuck in a different conversation. This is, uh, I, I believe you're changing the conversation about what could be possible, what could be possible within the existing legislative regulatory framework. And, and I want to support that and, and kind of, yeah, pitch this and get the ball rolling and, um, and invite more exciting proposals of what we can do to respect good, honest, responsible Canadian citizens who enjoy firearms. Absolutely. And I really appreciate you uh, giving me a platform to talk about this and being willing to engage with the idea. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. Thank you. All the best, Nicholas.